Okay, so we just learned about BIOS lock enable. So that is one mechanism that a defender can use to try to defend against an attacker writing into the spy flash. So what can attackers then do to defeat BIOS lock enable? Well, the sleep-wake vulnerabilities that we're going to talk about later in the class, which we also said applied to protected range registers, apply to this as well. But we'll cover that later. What else? Well, once again, you as an attacker could try to exploit the BIOS before the BIOS lock enable is set or any time before SMM is locked down really because if you can get into SMM, then you can just go ahead and change the code that is otherwise rewriting BIOS write enable equal to zero. And once again, you know, the defense is just find all the bugs, right? Find all the bugs and mitigate all the bugs. So what else could an attacker do? Well, they could compromise SMM at runtime. So this is about attacking the BIOS before SMM is locked down. And this is about attacking SMM just any time that the system is running. But that is a full threat tree unto itself, understanding, you know, the various attack surfaces of SMM. So we're going to skip that until later as well. So what else, what else? Well, then there is a thing called suppressing of SMIs. So we saw that BIOS write enable being rewritten to zero depends on the system management interrupt firing and then the code in system management mode rewriting the BIOS write enable equal to zero. So if the system management interrupt never fires, then there will never be an opportunity to write it back to zero. So the first attack of that form that we'll consider was named Charizard by Sam Cornwell. And that was the recognition that there is a system management interrupt enable global SMI enable field, which if set to zero will suppress all system management interrupts on the system. But there was a lock bit that could be set so that you can't actually set that to zero. So what does that look like? Well, here's from the slides and in the slides, it said that at the time that we were exploring the internal MITRE systems, we found that 40% of them did not set the system management interrupt lock. And consequently, at some register SMI enable, which is PM base plus 30, which we haven't learned about yet, but we'll learn about in the system management section. Some register had a global system management enable. And if it's set to zero, then no SMIs straight up will be generated by the PCH. And if it's set to one, then it is allowed to enable system management interrupts. And it says there that when the system management interrupt lock is set, this bit cannot be changed. So you couldn't change it from a one to a zero, which is what an attacker would want to do. So we said at the time that about 40% of our systems, you know, on our internal network were all having this lock not set. So here it is just restated in the five series chipset. And that is basically the exact same thing as was shown in that presentation. And then the SMI lock bit is found, you guessed it, in the LPC. You know, this is why we said the LPC PCI configuration address space is really, really important in this class. So general power management configuration, LPC, bus zero, device 31, function zero, offset A zero, there's a register and at bit four is the SMI lock. So that is what's going to stop an attacker from being able to disable all the system management interrupts and consequently be able to write to the BIOS if BIOS lock enable is the only thing protecting the system. On the 100 series chipset, it's more or less the same. We once again have a SMI enable and there is still the global SMI enable bit in order to say if it's zero, then you're not allowed to have any SMIs whatsoever. And if it's one, then you are. And once more, it says that it is locked by SMI lock bit. The SMI lock bit is then found in a slightly different location on the 100 series chipset. You can see it says device 31 function two. So instead of function zero, it's function two, but it is still at offset A zero and it does still behave the same way. So once this is set, then writes to the global SMI enable bit will have no effect. So the primary defense for that is to set the SMI lock bit, but there are other defenses such as setting SMM BWP, BIOS write protect. So what is that? So we saw this diagram back when we were looking at the BIOS write enable and BIOS lock enable, but up here at bit five, there is actually this other thing, SMM BWP, SMM BIOS write protect. And I don't think that disable should be there because when it's one, it is enabled, not disabled. Anyways, so when bit five is set to one, the BIOS region of SMM is, sorry, the BIOS region SMM protection is enabled. The BIOS region is not writable unless all processors are in SMM. So this notion of, you know, you can suppress the SMIs and then you can write to the BIOS. If this BIOS write protect bit is set,
then that would mean, well, it doesn't matter if you suppress the SMIs because you and your attacker code are probably not in SMM. If you were, then you wouldn't need to do any of these games. So you're just running in the kernel somewhere. You're trying to write to the BIOS. But if this bit was set, then the hardware will still not let you write to the BIOS because you are not in SMM. It needs to have all the processors in SMM before it can write. So this bit didn't even exist on you know, some of the older systems, and that's a good reason to always read the manuals to see what new protections come into existence. And so you know, this is a very powerful defense against an attacker who's only in kernel and is trying to privilege escalate to BIOS. On the 100 series datasheet instead, uh, it is still in the LPC device, so uh, device 31, function zero. But now they've uh, changed the name to enable in SMM STS, so probably status. Uh, but unfortunately, this description leaves a lot to be desired. It says things like, you know, if this bit five is set, then WPD must be one and in SMM STS, which is at address fed 30880 bit zero must be one. Well, that thing is not documented anywhere that I can find. Hopefully it's documented in the private documentation, but you know, this, this doesn't really help someone who was uh, you know, trying to actually lock down their system. Okay, then there is one more way that potentially could be used to defend against this, and that is a technology called Intel BIOSGuard. So Intel BIOSGuard is mostly you know, private documentation, so there's not really much I can point you at here. I can just show you the marketing picture. And according to the marketing picture, the basic idea is that updates to the BIOS can only occur uh, via something called an authenticated code module. So an authenticated code module is a blob of code that is signed by Intel. Uh, the you know other third-party vendors are not allowed to change it or alter it in any way, but there's this notion that they could sign a you know BIOS update package. And with that signature, they could feed the BIOS update and the signature to the BIOS guard agent. It would run an SMM and it and only it would be allowed to write the update to the spy flash. So it's kind of a even more privileged version of it's not good enough to just be an SMM. You also specifically have to be, you know, this authenticated code module running by Intel. And presumably behind the scenes, there's, you know, some sort of special bits that are twiddled that can only be twiddled by an authenticated code module that makes it so that only their SMM code can actually uh, write to the BIOS.